Today we're gonna to turn a Pringles can into a telephoto pinhole lens for your camera. Hey everyone, Sean here with photodeox.com. It's Christmas time and you might have a little bit of free time around the holidays and it's a perfect time to make really weird zany crafts uh, with food packaging. Today I'm gonna to show you how to turn a Pringles can like this into a telephoto pinhole lens. Now, what do I mean by telephoto pinhole lens? Well, a couple years ago, I showed in a video how to make a body cap pinhole lens. Basically, you take some metal from a soda can, drill a hole in a body cap, tape it there, and voila, you have yourself a pinhole. But putting the pinhole this close to the sensor of your camera means it's going to be a wide angle lens for the most part. It'll be around 20 to 50 millimeters, depending on how big the hole is, where you place it in the body cap, but it's going to be fairly wide angle. And recently I was wondering, how could I make a pinhole lens that was zoomed in more, you know, like a telephoto lens, like 100 millimeters. And what I found is if you put some space uh, between your pinhole lens and your camera. Uh, this is a Photodeox macro tube, Sony E-mount to Sony E-mount. It's designed to put space between a lens and camera so you can do macro focusing. But when you put it on a pinhole lens and put it on your camera, it actually crops in on the pinhole image circle and it makes it a longer lens, uh, closer to like a 75 to 100 millimeter lens. And this is great if you're someone like me who likes to shoot pinhole uh, because suddenly you have a different focal length to work with. Uh, it's great for street photography. Uh, it's great for landscapes where you want to get in on some more detail. So this setup's fine, you know, macro extension tube, uh, homemade pinhole lens, but I thought we'd go a little zanier. So we're gonna take this Pringles can and do the same thing. Let me show you what you will need to do this build. For this build, you're gonna need a grab and go size Pringles can, a soda can, some sewing needles, some gaff tape or black duct tape, a sharp box cutter, some scissors, and then two photo deox rings, a 67 millimeter macro reverse ring, and a 77 millimeter to 67 millimeter step up ring. Okay, you've got all the ingredients. Here's how to build it. We're gonna start by taking our box cutter and cutting the metal bottom off the Pringles can, making sure to keep the cut straight. Next up, we're gonna take the lid off the top of the Pringles can, and we're gonna cut a hole in the very center. Next up, we're gonna take the scissors and we're going to cut a small square out of the soda can. Then we're gonna take one of the smallest sewing needles we can find in our kit and we're gonna make a small pinprick hole in the metal of the soda can. And when you're done, you can also use a little bit of sandpaper to sand the edges to make the pinhole cleaner. Position it in the very center of the hole of the Pringles can lid. Then we're gonna use black tape to tape it down. And then we're going to use the black tape to mask out the rest of the bottom of the lid so no light can get in. Next, we're gonna use the black tape to cover the silver shiny interior of the inside of the Pringles can to reduce reflection. We're also gonna use a black Sharpie on the rear of the pinhole metal plate just to color it black to reduce the reflection. Next, we're gonna take our macro reverse ring and we're going to add the step down ring to it, screw it together, and then we're going to tape it to the back of the Pringle scan. Now I'm using our Sony E-mount macro reverse ring so I can mount this assembly onto my Sony E-mount camera. And once you are done, you will have something like this. Now you'll see I didn't go with a full size Pringles can. I went with a smaller grab and go option. And this is because I was a little unsure of how telephoto I wanted it. I wasn't sure if by adding this much space, it would make it harder for the camera to see the pinhole. But I found with this setup with the grab and go, I'm getting about a 140 millimeter full frame equivalent with the pinhole lens, which is great for me. It's exactly the type of focal length I was looking for. Now there are some drawbacks to this setup. Obviously you're shooting with a homemade pinhole lens. So it's gonna be super, super lo-fi image. Everything's gonna be in focus, but not that in focus. And to get a usable exposure, you're either gonna to have to shoot at a very long shutter speed, shoot a long exposure image, or use a camera like my Sony a7S II, which can practically see in the dark. You can crank that ISO up to crazy sensitivity, and you can even shoot video with this lens. That's right, my 140 millimeter pinhole lens can be used to shoot video in daylight. 
Is it good looking video? No, <laughs> it's terrible, but it's definitely a unique look. And I think it's pretty cool that I'm shooting through a piece of a soda can and a Pringles container. You can also do some pretty cool experimental photography with pinhole lenses because the aperture is so small, even in bright daylight, you can do like a 20 second exposure. Like in this shot, I set up the camera, then I ran over and stood in the scene, uh, and then halfway I moved so I kind of looked like a ghost. Or in this shot, I stood in profile in one position and then halfway through the exposure, I moved to another position, so there's two of me. And with these Christmas tree images, I hand held the camera and you get these really beautiful light trails of the Christmas lights as I kind of move the camera around. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to look out with this setup is make sure you use plenty of tape and or paint. Uh, with some of these images, you can see some purple fringing on the edges. That means I'm getting some light leak around these tape seals, or maybe there's a little bit of light coming through the cap here. So I can definitely kind of go over it, add some more tape, to correct that. But overall, I'm happy with this build, and if you try it yourself, send us a link. I'd love to see what you come up with. Heck, use a full-size Pringles can and show me how far you can zoom in uh, with your homemade pinhole lens. Today's DIY video is brought to you by photodeox.com. We are a photo and video gear and accessory company. If you are a filmmaker or a photographer, pretty much any accessories you would need for your creative process, we've got you covered here at Photo Deox. Uh, we carry filters, lens adapters, LED lights. Uh, we don't carry uh, Pringles cans, but you can get these at the grocery store. And to learn more about photodeox.com, click the link in the description below. Also, click right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more fun, creative, uh, Pringles-related photography videos like this one. I'm Sean with PhotoDeox.com, and happy DIY pinhole photography.